Hi, I'm James McGuire, and our topic today is handling your IT legacy systems. Those uh, aging tech systems you should probably be paying more attention to than you are. To talk about that, I'm joined by a thought leader in the field. With me is Frank Scavo, president of research firm uh, Computer Economics and consulting firm Strativa. Hey, Frank, how are you doing today? I'm good, James. Thank you. Good. And uh, where are you located today, Frank? Uh, we're in uh, Southern California here in Orange County. Uh huh. Okay. Not not that they're not that far from me in uh, the Bay Area. Okay. There Good you deal. Go. Yeah. So you you wrote a white paper entitled uh, "Avoiding Technical Bankruptcy in Legacy Systems," and uh, you know what what do you mean by that? I know you don't mean actually financial bankruptcy, but what, what is right. technical bankruptcy and, and what are some of the risks involved here? Well, it is as you know, and most of your listeners know that the term you know technical debt is uh, is is a well known and well recognized term. Um, originated in software engineering with software developers that took quick and dirty ways of developing software and thereby incurred a debt in the future to come back and and fix it. And uh, and recently, it's it's also been come come to um, represent the thought that if you have a package software like an ERP system or CRM and you do not keep that package up to date that you incur a technical debt that at some point in the future you're going to have to pay back that um, you know time and expense to upgrade upgrade the system so uh, and that's a very well recognized you know kind of problem in, right. in corporate IT so all, what, all what, too well recognized probably that's right that's yeah. right so you know, we took that thought because we had been noticing some cases in our consulting business at Strativa where we had gone in to do an IT assessment on a company with a legacy system that had gotten not just into debt, but way beyond, you know, one or two version upgrades. Now, we're right. talking about 10, 15, yeah. 20 years of never having updated that system. Oh, okay. Ooh. So, and, and I, I got to think about this is that these folks, you could say, are not just in technical debt. They've crossed over into technical bankruptcy. Right. So, like you said, this is not talking about financial bankruptcy. In fact, in a couple of cases, these companies are doing pretty well financially. But in terms of their ERP systems, which is specifically what we're talking about here in these cases, they had gotten to the point where they could not dig themselves out of that hole. Well, how is it the companies get this far down the slippery slope? I mean, we know these, <laughs> these, these legacy systems in many ways run the world. I mean, the, the hot new apps get all the headlines, but in reality, right. the legacy apps really run the world. And but how does a company get well, to you, where, you know, where, great, where it's so neglected for so long? That, that's a great question. Yeah, it's just like financial bankruptcy. How, how did they get? You know, how did they go broke? Right. Right. Yeah. You know, one. You know, one credit card bill <laughs> at a time. Right. You know? It's a slippery slope. Yeah. I mean, once you start, you know, going into debt and you can't pay it back, it's just a matter of time before you're just over the hill. You just can't. You can't dig yourself out of that hole. Is, and, and is so it more often and the the IT division or, or the or the business division? If we want to point fingers here, or maybe we well, don't want to point fingers, but it's a conspiracy between the two. Really. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, like I point out in this report, you know, the IT department's always got something important to do. Right. And, you know, if I don't upgrade my, you know, pick a vendor Oracle system this year, you know, nothing bad happens immediately, right? I got that money to spend on something else. Oh, sure. And the business says, yeah, we know what that new, you know, website, you know, developed or whatever that, yeah, go ahead and put off that Oracle upgrade or SAP or QAD or, you know, Microsoft, whatever it is. Right. And so, um, like I say, the, the business leaders and the IT leaders kind of conspire together to put off the hard work of doing an upgrade. And once and what, you've once you've gone past one, now the second one becomes harder because now you got two versions to catch up with. And if you've done modifications, you got to retrofit those. And you know, before you know it, it's a very high mountain to climb. Right. And suddenly, it's not just a Thursday afternoon, Thursday and Friday afternoon product. It's a it's a serious product. Someone's got to put some money and time into. That's right. That's right. What about the role of uh, of shadow IT in this? And I, you know, you talked about this in the paper. I think it's interesting in that. I mean, shadow IT, as I see it, in many ways, a lot of things, good things get done because shadow IT exists. It's, it's people having their own division credit card. They're going around IT. They're getting a lot of work done. Uh, but but how, does, how does shadow IT work into the whole technical bankruptcy idea? It's at a very close relationship. And, and I, don't, I don't like the term shadow IT because a lot of times it's done in the open. There's no shadow involved. It's right. that the IT group can't get to that important project. And so the business leaders say, hey, how about we just go ahead and 
we'll handle this one ourselves. So uh, some of it is done behind the scenes and clandestinely and so on, but a lot of it's done in the open. And so it, it does uh, fit into this thought that um, the IT organization um, gets into a situation where that legacy system has gotten very far behind uh, there may be needs that now that legacy system cannot satisfy in the business. So, and now they're so far behind they can't upgrade. So the business now creates side systems, you know, whether in you know Microsoft Access, Excel, or cloud services, mm -hmm. and um, they grow up around the legacy system, which now makes it even harder to upgrade because now you got to integrate or interface with these systems or replace them, and the business likes them or doesn't like them, or you know nobody understands them, and so it's right. just a big mess. The, the the person who once knew everything about them is, is now gone. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and you, you mentioned in the paper that um, ERP, Enterprise, Enterprise Resource Planning, is often at the center of the technical bankruptcy problem. Why, why is ERP often involved here? Well, it's the biggest and the baddest system usually in the apps portfolio. So, <laughs> you right. know, if you think CRM is challenging, try ERP as far as upgrades. So mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, it's at the center. It's at the core these systems stick around for a long time. They're embedded in business processes. They're hard to replace. And, and especially as companies grow, they get more difficult. Right. So I guess the, the, the big question then is, you know, what can companies do to avoid technical bankruptcy? I mean, it's what, what is, I'm sure there's no easy solution, but what is, what, what is the best or most re realistic solution to this? Well, you really have to keep up with those upgrades. So, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's like telling, I don't know, somebody that's you know it, it's kind of after the fact right so that doesn't help you if you're already there um to avoid technical bankruptcy you've got to keep up with version upgrades now the you know if if you haven't and now you're far behind it really takes a dedicated commitment up and down the organization from the top to the bottom to work yourself out of that um out of that situation which might mean, um, you know, doing a major series of version upgrades. It might mean, you know, migrating to a completely different system. Um, fortunately, you know, I mean, th this also ties in with cloud applications or cloud computing, because the newer cloud applications actually, for the most part, have greatly mitigated or eliminated this problem. Because as you know, with a true cloud ERP system, the vendor is now responsible for those version upgrades or in fact doesn't even have version upgrades because they're trickling in, you know, right. changes to the system right. on an ongoing basis. So I think for the long term, um, companies that are on a more modern platform uh, are going to be in better shape going forward. And I think this is one of the great benefits of cloud computing that people generally don't recognize. They see, you know, oh, no IT infrastructure. I don't have to have a data center. I don't have to have a lot of support people. They don't realize that one of the big advantages is they've eliminated or at least mitigated the problem of doing version upgrades. So I think for the long right. term, as more and more companies get to uh, cloud platforms, modern cloud platforms, this this problem is going to go away. But uh, in the meantime, we got, it, you know, it's not the majority. I think our report showed something like, you know, 15, 17 percent, according to our survey, companies could be considered in this situation where they haven't done an upgrade in 15 or 20 years, and wow. are, you know, okay. two or three or four version upgrades behind. Uh, those guys have got some serious. <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> it's still running at that point. I mean, yeah. I know the cloud is one answer, but in terms of say there's a company that has that the legacy in-house, you know, app hasn't been upgraded in a long time. It seems like that might fall a bit more on the IT folks to scream and scream noise. Cause the business folks are always like, well, can we put it off? And it's really sort of, it, in this case, it seems like it falls more on the IT folks to say, look, this is a, a ship that might sink here if we don't put money into it now. Well, there's a lot of issues and I've seen clients. In fact, I've got one, uh, we're a company, not a client. We're talking to a company right now that has got a system that was installed in the 1980s. Wow. I mean, I don't know how they got through Y2K, you know, somehow <laughs> they got through it, but right. Um, they're okay. It's a little bit smaller organization, so they'll find a way to, uh, you know, we're going to hopefully help them uh, replace that system. But I've seen other cases where there are major platform considerations because this might be running on an older version of Windows Server, it might be running on an older platform that's not even supported. Now they're running in emulation mode. Right. Um, there are major platform issues and there are security issues. 
uh, we had one client that was on an older version of, of Windows Server that was no longer supported by Microsoft. And so that system was definitely at risk for, you know, security or business continuity issues. So right. there's a lot of reasons that the IT group is going to scream about that and say, look, we've got to do something. We've got to do it pretty quick. So yes. Yeah, it, it, and, it, and you know, you mentioned the the way cloud services can mitigate the problem, and and, and it does seem like long term, as more of this migration to the cloud, this problem might, might sort of magically disappear because it'll be the cloud vendor's headache. Um, how close are we to that point? Do you think these systems are very long shelf life? So I don't, I'm not hopeful that this is going to go away in you know a year or two, right? So right. I think the average life, and it's in the report. I forget what the you know, it's 10 or 12 years is the average life of an ERP system. Wow. Okay. So these systems stick around for a long time. If they're well maintained, they can, they can, they can last for a while. But uh, I think this problem is going to be with us for a while. Of course, I mean, probably the average life of a CIO might be, you know, three or, three <laughs> or four years. Oh, you know, there's the, there, I mean, you've, you've kind of captured another point I hadn't thought of, but if the life of the system is longer than the tenure of the CIO, the CIO <laughs> might say, you know, hey, I'm only going to be in this job another couple of years. I'll leave this to my successor. <laughs> kind of like U.S. presidents, right? They don't really solve long-term problems. <laughs> Everybody they say, leave it for the next guy, right? <laughs> Everyone would rather kick the problem down the road. It's much right. easier. Sure. Uh, you know, we talk about cloud. I think it's interesting to get your view on some of the cloud app players, like, you know, Salesforce, Workday, Net NetSuite. What, what, what do you see happening in that sector? What, 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 what's a big trend you think is significant going on there? Well, I think the interesting thing is that, um, you know, cloud has had, cloud applications have had huge, I mean, in some cases, they're just dominant in their sector. I mean, so right. CRM. CRM in particular. Yep. In particular. And I'm not just talking about Salesforce, but all the leading cloud providers are now offering, you know, you know, clouds. I mean, Oracle, SAP, all of them are cloud deployment. So, I mean, the battle's long been won there. Right. Um, other and areas. On, on Oracle's standpoint, it seems like Oracle in the cloud, that was a major turning point when, when they began offering cloud. That, that was definitely a big deal. That's right. Uh, so CRM and then uh, HCM, you know, human capital management, HR systems. I mean, for a long time, we've had payroll. I mean, was a, was a managed service or, you know, ADP and so on, paychecks. Um, I mean, very few companies that are selecting new HEM systems today are going to on-premises or even hosted models. They're all cloud deployments, right? Cloud, modern cloud systems. Yeah. The laggard in this has been ERP. And uh, interestingly, I was just at the Plex conference uh, last week, which is, as you may know, a um, long-established pure cloud vendor in the manufacturing space and then followed immediately by a Workday Analyst event and it, it, which, as you know, is uh, a leading provider of cloud, you know, HCM systems and now financials as well. And, um, you know, Workday is interesting because you could consider it like an ERP vendor, although it doesn't handle the heavy lifting in operational systems like manufacturing or, you know, retail merchandising or, you know, patient care and so on. It's really limited to horizontal applications like HCM and, and, uh, and financials. Um, the operational systems like Plex and NetSuite and others uh, handle do really not have a dominant market share yet, like we see in HCM and uh, and CRM. So I think there's a lot of, as I said in the past, there's a lot of uh, you know white space in that market for providers to expand and grow. Um, you know how long that's going to take. You know it's not easy to build a complete ERP system from scratch if it's going to address operational management like in manufacturing wholesale distribution or other operational uh, functions of other industries right so that's i think where the you know where the where the real growth and and the need is and that's where this problem of technical bankruptcy and uh, technical debt uh is is occurring as well those systems are hard to replace so um that's the part i'm very anxious to see um, progress made more in the heavy lifting of ERP systems in the cloud. And, and it seems like that might not be a job for a startup to tackle that. It might be an established player needs to step in and, and push that forward. Well, you've kind of got a trade-off. So the established players like Microsoft, Oracle, SAP have got huge investments in their traditional, I don't want to say legacy because we're talking about that in a negative, but in their traditional offerings, which in fact have a dominant market share now. Right. So they're very functionally rich. 
and they take an approach to you know migrate that functionality to something that looks like a cloud application but in most cases they're you know they they have trade-offs in, in doing that so the pure cloud vendors that start from scratch have you know kind of technical you know purity or technical an ideal technical architecture but the functionality may be lacking or in some cases right. is lacking right so you know buyer beware you've got a you know you'd, you'd like to have both right so yeah so so a larger company like procter and gamble can't go down to like a startup startups version of the erp they, they need that full functionality well they may they may you know they may do that in on a plant ba plant by plant basis right mm -hmm. so you okay. have some you know i mean a, a case study or a well-known example of that is caterpillar for which interestingly both you i believe is both using workday and plex oh. um they've implemented you know plex in some of their manufacturing plants or, or their operations so um large companies like procter and gamble uh and others typically do not run a single system across all their facilities they're just so complex and their business is so diverse that they have a multitude of systems you know that's a lot of good stuff i think you you, you may have said it is there something you want to say in terms of looking to the future where, where is where is maintaining the legacy system going and, and or its relationship with the cloud what, what, do you, what do you see going on, say, maybe three, five years from now in, in terms of that? Well, I think that increasingly you're going to see companies that are just at the point where it becomes a real, uh, the legacy system or the system that has gotten so far behind becomes a real barrier to innovation. Mm -hmm. So companies today are, you know, very much interested in becoming mobile enterprises. They're interested in, uh, you know, the Internet of Things, big data and so on. And all of this data, you know, ultimately is going to touch the legacy ERP system. So companies, you know, they may be able to put this off for a while, but at some point it becomes a real obstacle to their, to innovation, which is, you know, becoming a digital business, which is where everybody wants to, to be these days. So I, I think uh, the pressure is going to increase on, on CIOs and CEOs to uh, finally step up and, uh, and take some real actions. The moral of the story is you just can't ignore that old system like you want to. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Frank, all thank right. you very much. I, I will send you the link when it's all edited and uh, we can tweet it. Thanks and, so uh, much. A lot of good stuff. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you.